Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Getting going on a stair here, and in this video, we're gonna go over how to square mortise balusters into your handrail and shoe rail using a square mortiser, a hollow chisel mortiser. So, hope you enjoy the video. Not a lot of information out there on this topic. Typically in production settings, you would see these little shoes used around balusters so that you could drill a round hole but we're gonna really accentuate the, the craftsmanship and go with square mortises on these balusters. So this video will be about how to do a horizontal balcony rail. There will also be another video going over how to do a rake handrail, which involves using the tilt mechanism of the mortiser here. So look for that also, but let's dig right in and uh, get started. So we're up here at the, the balcony, and as you can see, I've got my handrail and shoe rail in place. Those are not nailed off or installed, they're just dry fit. And I dry fit them because it helps square up the newels whenever I set the newels in PL. Um, it helps keep those kind of where they're supposed to be while they set up. So I actually did this yesterday afternoon, so everything should be pretty locked in here this morning. But the handrail and shoe rail is in loose, and the first thing I need to do is mark out where I want my balusters to be located. Now the baluster that we have selected for this job is just a standard half inch by half inch iron baluster, so that's pretty simple. Code dictates that these cannot be more than four inches apart. I'm gonna shoot for about three and a half inches of space between each baluster. So I'll get my calculator out and figure out what my spacing needs to be. So I get out my phone and open my Construction Master Pro app. I have 72 inches uh, across. So I'm gonna just take 72 inches divided by four inches because that's gonna give me three and a half inches of space between plus the half inch baluster, three and a half plus a half inch is four. So that's going to give me 18 balusters approximately. Now I like to use an odd number on the balusters, that way I can have one directly in the middle. So I'm going to go with 17 times 0.5, since they're a half inch wide, equals eight and a half inches. So now I'll take 72 inches minus 8.5 equals, and even though there's 17 balusters, there's going to be 18 spaces. So divide that by 18 equals three and a half inches exactly between each baluster. So that's awesome, we'll go with that. Now whenever it comes to baluster layout, there's a few things you're gonna want. I like to use tape, that way I don't get pencil marks all over this oak. Um, it's a little bit harder to sand the, sand the pencil marks off oak than it is like poplar, but putting some tape down is nice. A laser for plumbing up my center line and then a nice quality compass. You'll see what this is all about in a minute. And then I like a double square also, that helps mark the center line. So now on this shoe rail, my post to post, post center width was 72 inches. So again, I like to use an odd number of balusters if I can, just because then I can put a baluster right dead center and work in both directions and it's just easy. So, 36 inches is dead center. I took my double square and I marked the center point of this shoe rail all along here just by using this double square and a pencil. So I have the center line there. Now because my spacing between the balusters is three and a half inches, my spacing center to center on the balusters is gonna be four inches. And that's where this comes in. I'm gonna take my compass and I'm gonna use my tape measure and try and get this set so that point to point, I'm exactly four inches apart. So what I've got here, I've got the center of my end baluster and the center of my middle baluster marked. And I'm just gonna very lightly take the compass, follow that center line, and lay it off lightly. And I'm not pushing these points in very hard at all. I'm gonna lay it off and make sure that I'm coming dead center on that line. And if I'm not, I'm just gonna micro adjust this and then do it again until it's perfect. This reduces a lot of the potential for mistakes. So once I've got it perfect, I'm gonna push. This has really sharp points on it. 
So I'm gonna start in the center. I'm gonna push hard and make a nice indentation in that wood on that center line. Same thing on the next one. Twist it around, push hard, leave that nice point, push hard, push hard. So this compass is a nice tool to have because most of the time you're not gonna have a perfect even number between your posts. It's gonna be some odd number like 72 and 3 16 and your actual baluster spacing might be like three and nine sixty-fourths, which you just can't do on a tape measure uh, very well. So using something like this uh, really helps reduce errors and uh, keeps things really perfect. Now, if you don't have a compass like that, there is a way to do that with your Construction Master Pro app on your calculator, and I'll show you that next. So we have four inches center to center, so all I do is hit four inches plus equals. That doubled it to eight. Now I hit equals, now it's 12, equals 16. So you see it automatically adds four inches each time I hit that equals button. So you can keep going along. Same thing if it was like three inches and five sixteenths, some number that's really hard to do the math in your head. Just hit plus equals, 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 equals. So you only have to hit the plus equals the first time and then it's just equals, equals, equals after that. But I will say you'll find if you're using the calculator, it's not gonna be as precise. You'll end up, again, you're gonna get this act, it might say it's three and five sixteenths, but it might be, you know, some really odd down to the 64th measurements. You'll get to the end and it's gonna be that 164th is gonna compound over 20 balusters and you're gonna end up with an odd space and that's why I like to use the compass. So now at this point, I've used my square to mark onto the handrail the center location. I don't need to, the center location running the length is not really important, you'll see later. I'm just marking across my centers. Also, make sure on the end of the board you see R, R for right side. And then over here, left L for left and then I also wrote wall that makes sure I don't get these flipped around and I know right where they go one thing I failed to mention whenever I pulled this one off a lot of times on your null posts you'll have a wrap around the bottom so this shoe rail will end up being three quarters of an inch shorter than the handrail so if you take all this down you can't just put the ends you can't just line up the ends like this and expect it to work out. And that's where it's nice to take your laser and just plumb up from your center here and mark your center here. And then whenever you're laying out the rest of the balusters on this board, start with those, those center lines lined up because you can also deal with issues with sometimes newel posts might not quite, quite be plumb, which will affect the length of the handrail versus the shoe rail. So keep that in mind. So you can see here, I've taken down the handrail, I flipped it over and just set it right down into place. And now I'm gonna use my square to line up the center on the handrail and the center on the shoe rail and then work both ways, marking with my square. At this point, all the baluster locations are marked out on the handrail and the shoe rail. So I'm gonna move, take these pieces down to the mortiser and mortise out all these square holes. Now here's my piece of shoe rail. Here's my half inch baluster. I want to set this up so that my mortiser is centered. So what I like to do is rip a piece. So five and a quarter minus a half inch four and three quarter divided by two, two and three eighths. So I like to rip a piece on the table saw, two and three eighths, and we'll come over here to the mortiser. And as you can see, I had this set up for handrail before, so I'm gonna have to adjust the fence and get this bit centered. So I'll take my scrap board, two and three eighths, I'll loosen my fence, push it back, 
drop the head down then I'll use my scrap piece and get that nice and snug then I can just tighten my fence and now this will be centered at two and five eighths right in the middle of my shoe rail. Now it's important to note whenever I centered this bit you notice I didn't pay any attention to if the fence was square to the base of the machine or not. That's not important. The important thing is that the fence is square to the bit and it's actually easy to get these square bits twisted. So I used this piece to square the bit. So whenever I drop this down, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm nice and snug on the back side and tight against my fence. That tells me that the, the edge of this bit is running parallel with the fence, which is really key. If I wouldn't have ripped this piece and I just would have used my tape measure here to center it, I wouldn't have been able to tell if that bit was square to the fence or not. So that's why I like to rip these pieces like this. Now you see here I have my depth stop so that whenever I drop this down, it's hitting that collar. That's my depth stop. Since this is the shoe rail, I like to go as deep as I can without going through the shoe rail. So hopefully this depth will be pretty good for me. So now that we've got these all square mortised, a lot of times there will be some fuzzies on here. So I like to hit them with the sander before I take them back up and put them into place. Got my shoe rails sanded. Now my handrails are down here. This is gonna be the same process for centering the bit on the mortiser. Just deduct. I got two and three quarter inch width on these handrails, minus a half inch. That's two and a quarter divided by two. It's gonna be an inch and an eighth piece to center my bit. So come over here, drop my head down, loosen my fence. Sorry about the bad camera work. Snug that up, then lock down my fence. And that's good to go now. Now because I am switching over to handrails, I do have to adjust my depth stop again. Definitely don't want to be going all the way through the handrail. So you can see the square chisel kind of tapers off up here. So I set my stop so that it's about even with where that square chisel tapers off. You can see it's set right here.
just wanted to take a quick second if you're learning and this is helping you in any way the way that you can help me is by visiting the links which i post in the notes with the video to the tools i'm using if you see me using a unique tool there's a good chance i'm putting it in those notes and that's how it uh, makes it worthwhile for me to do these videos um, your support is much appreciated visiting those links and of course you can always like and subscribe so thanks for that so now I've got my handrail and my shoe rail all mortised out and I'm getting ready to take those back up and the next step will be to cut a bunch of these balusters and I need to know what length I want to cut those and the best way to do that is going to be to know the space between my shoe rail and the bottom of the handrail and then add to that whatever the depth of my mortises are. So I'm just gonna take a couple scraps of baluster, mark them with a pencil. That way I can get a good idea on what the gate, the depth of these mortises actually is. Same thing on the shoe rail. I'll jam it in as far as it'll go. Mark the bottom. And then I'll pull these out and measure whatever that is. Looks like it's about a half inch on both of them and I'll add that to the space between the bottom of the handrail and the top of the shoe rail and that'll be my baluster length. So this now brings us to my iron baluster cutting station which consists of a metal cutting chop saw, a jig that I made, angle grinder for rounding over the ends. Um, yeah, that's about it. So I determined I need 37 balusters cut at 35 and a half inches. So you'll see this is a really fast setup for knocking out a lot of baluster cutting fast. Um, look for a different video going over tools for cutting iron balusters. I'm not gonna get in depth in this video, but um, you'll see this is a pretty slick setup. The way my jig is set up, this is a stop block. And all I have to do is line up the backside of this with my measurement. So I want 35 and a half inches. So we'll line up the back with 35 and a half inches, lock it down, and then I can just set my baluster on here, bump it to my stop, and that'll be the length I need. You'll notice I'm cutting off the pin end. This is a rounded end and that's gotta go for square mortises. Another important note, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a random hole here. I have no idea what that is for. You've gotta make sure your mortise is deep enough to cover up that hole. Otherwise, if your mortise isn't deep enough, you need to cut off this end too. so here we are this is the tricky part I've got my balusters cut and as you can see I've just dry fitted my handrail with two balusters on each end and I've got that down nice and secure where that's going to be in its final resting place but what I need to do now is look ahead a couple steps at how I'm going to fasten this handrail to the newel posts um, there's different options with a thin handrail like this um, a rail bolt, I'm, I'm not a big fan of rail bolts, not, they're super strong, but you have to plug them, it's, it, I just feel like it's more work. What uh, I like to do is if I have enough space inside my newel post, I like to screw from the inside with a screw like this, 
and I'll get into that more in a second. But with the rail in position, it's really key because I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark where that rail is going to end up being and then I can know right where to drill my holes in the newel post and in the handrail so that I can use these screws from the inside with a right angle attachment like this DeWalt here which I'll have in the link I'll have linked up in the notes but I really like to do that the other variable that I've got going on here is these handrails have a really bad dip in them so I was thinking ahead whenever I was cutting these I saw the dip and I made it so that the dip is down and what that's going to allow me to do is push I'm going to drop that handrail on there and I'm going to push down on both ends whenever I screw it and that's going to straighten that handrail out if I would have put the dip up there wouldn't have been any way to apply pressure to straighten that out so I'm also going to be dealing with that you can maybe see here with my level you can see that that space under the level it's the GoPro won't pick it up but it's a pretty nasty dip in this handrail to deal with so the next thing I do to prep to fasten these is I use one of these stubbies stubby bits in my right angle drill and you can see in there I already drilled those two holes to connect this handrail so next I'm going to do these two others and try and show you guys Now you can see with having these holes drilled, it goes through the newel and into the handrail uh, a little bit. So that's automatically going to line it up and get it where it needs to be whenever I put those screws in. Uh, it's going to make things easier. I want to take a second just to point out again this dip in the handrail how I'm taking that out now the other side of this handrail is screwed but look right here see how that moves that's how much of a dip there is so I've got my lines I don't know if you can see them right there so I'll get that down into place and that's gonna straighten this handrail out I'm getting ready to drop this next handrail onto these balusters and I want to point out a couple things that are really important about um, getting this handrail to go on easily and without damaging the bottom of the handrail. You'll notice the tops of these balusters are all rounded over. I hit all these with the grinder and removing that sharp edge is really important it helps them slide into place a lot easier so i made sure on all of these um, that i rounded over their face up so that the handrail goes down easier now the next thing you'll notice as i'm dropping this on you want to use an incline you can't drop it on with it perfectly level you want to have it tilted and then position each baluster one by one and your incline will go from like this to flattening out as you work your way along and get all the balusters in position. So as you see right here, I've got these first few in place, but then none of these are in place. So I just have to keep dropping this down and moving these into position and it'll keep lowering as I go. Alright guys, so there it is. Everything's installed. Um, as far as adhesive for your balusters, you want to use something that can bond to metal or wood. This E6100 works pretty well. Also, you can just use regular old PL Premium. Uh, whatever you do, you just want to use just the right amount so you don't make a huge mess. Also wanted to show you on this handrail, 
uh, we, we completely took that dip out of it and it's nice and flat, which is awesome. So that worked really well. You can see all my handrail connections are nice and tight, very, very solid. Using those screws, definitely not going anywhere. And then balusters are mortised in nice and tight. So that'll be a really nice look. So thanks for watching as always guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video of how to do square mortise balusters on a balcony, which is horizontal. I also plan on doing a video on how to do them on a rake. So look out for that video and then also how to um, just some tools and tips for production cutting iron balusters, the saws, the jig, the grinder, bandsaw, kind of talking about how to do that in a productive way. I'll have those videos coming also, so stay tuned for that.